All right, guys, today I want to do a video talking about my thoughts on expensive knives. And this video is a little bit of a response to another creator who made a video talking about basically essentially saying that, you know, he has expensive knives. He doesn't really care what people say when they talk smack about, oh, you should have bought this expensive knife or that expensive knife. Or, you know, ultimately he has these knives. He's going to use them the way he wants. He doesn't really care about your opinion or what knives you should or shouldn't buy. And to an extent, I do agree with that. I do have quite a few expensive knives myself. Some of these are expensive. Some of them are not. Uh, this one, in fact, is a custom. So it is pretty expensive and it does have a really nice edge on it anyways but as far as it goes I thought I would chime in on this because it's something that I think when certain creators come off in ways it's very demeaning and uh, ultimately just kind of like an F you to people's opinions and it's like you know go for it you know I, I don't really care what you think of my opinion per se but maybe there are some people out there that have valuable insights on opinions and it got me thinking about you know there are some knife makers and brands out there that are heavily hyped by the community that I think are absolute trash. And so in this video, I kind of wanted to summarize my thoughts on expensive knives and kind of my stance because there are, once again, things like the Grismo Norseman and things like many of the Shiro's um, out there, like the Shiro Gorov knives that I absolutely hate. And there's a, a reason why to that. And so ultimately I wanted to get to that in this video. So for me, when it comes down to it, I have done a video talking about why you should not invest in knives and try to have knives that are expensive to, you know, potentially resale or to have kind of in a way that like your money is set in a particular object that you could later sale sell for a higher price essentially like what you would do in a housing market or owning collectible cars you know owning collectible knives is something that people try to do now as far as it goes like i said i don't generally believe in doing that however it really grinds my gears when i see people out there in the knife community promoting knives like shiro's like grismo's because they are knives that are notoriously horrible when it comes to resale. Now, I can't say I'm perfect about this because I love hinderers and hinderers are once again a very interesting bird because they are very expensive, especially if you buy them from factory and the price you really have to know hinderers to know like what specifically makes a hinderer expensive because there are some XM18s, three and a half inches, just like this, that are thousands of dollars, right? Or people would spend thousands of dollars on, right? But then there are others that are like worth 350, 400 dollars, right? So hinderers are very, um, very contingent on the style, the edition, of course, limited editions, uh, blade steels, certain types of weird clips. The hinderer community is very weird as a whole, but uh, that's almost another video for another time. But by and large, when it comes down to it, I myself don't like buying knives that are bad investments, and I don't like it when other people recommend knives so flagrantly that are openly bad investments. And what I mean by this is there are some knives that are genuinely blades like I'll use the Grismo uh, for the biggest example, and that was that two years ago, even a year ago, the uh, the Grismo Norseman was going for north of a thousand dollars, and now we're seeing blades out there, the Grismos, uh, that are going for like five hundred, six hundred dollars, and so these knives are just you know not worth buying. And if you bought a Grismo for a thousand dollars and now you're selling it for you know five fifty to six hundred dollars, that's a terrible, terrible return on investment. And so once again, uh, it's worth saying that you know don't invest in knives with the hope to make money but at the same time too in my opinion I don't and I don't think anyone else likes going out there and spending you know like let's say you know fifteen hundred dollars on a knife and then ending up being able to only turn it for like six hundred dollars and the same we see for Shiro like their neons uh, you know they went for eight hundred nine hundred dollars and now you see them regularly going for you know four hundred fifty to six hundred dollars and so it's like you're literally just uh, you're really just throwing away money on knives that no one is particularly interested in. So when it comes down to expensive knives, like I'm all for them. I do really like them. But one, uh, don't get butt hurt 
about your knives not being worth it because I think there are some in the community that see these price drops and they're like oh yeah my thousand dollar custom Gr Grimsmo and it's like yeah your custom Grimsmo was poorly manufactured poorly made and so now it's not really worth a lot I mean I even look at the uh, CKF Evo which was a knife that I actually came very close to buying the uh, custom knife factory Evo and there's many generations they're now up to generation 4.0 like they're taking pre-orders on it but the uh, CKF Evos, uh, little no in fact, I think genuinely by most people, even people who own them, is that they are made in China. And so, you know, even these pre-orders, they're wanting you to spend anywhere from like a, a complete plain Jane Evo is like 600 something dollars, like 650, 675 dollars. And then the full dress ones are $1,800. But a lot of people buy somewhere in between. So let's say like a 700, 800 dollar knife and now i see those generation twos those generation threes going for you know 500 600 dollars and honestly like that's the thing if it's it's totally up to the end consumer if you really feel comfortable, you know, spending once again, like let's say $800 on a knife and then you do need to sell it for whatever reason and knowing the value or the street value of your knife is only, you know, $500, like you're going to feel like you got robbed and that's just the reality of it. So when it comes down to expensive knives, I mean, ultimately buy what speaks to you the most, but I think also to try to make smart and sound decisions on blades that hold their value very well i think like a really good example of this and the reason why and the reason why i own multiple chris reeves is that perennially they hold their value very well there is going to be a long and dedicated fan base to people like there's a lot of people out there that want to buy different chris reeves whether it's the sabenza 21 the sabenza 31 the Incosi. Um, these have a maybe not a huge demand to them but there's always going to be someone out there willing to pay the price for them and that's not saying that you can price gouge people and get more than what you paid but it just means that you can get a fair and equitable price for it and the value remains there like a 21 like this you know it's not the newest 21 out there and of course 21s are discontinued but they're going to hold their values very well and that's because chris reeve genuinely cares about the image of or the brand of chris reeve knives and so crk does a good job at that and that's why their knives hold value for a long time the work is also there and i think that that's like another reason why these hold their value so well is they're not just ooh cool titanium frame lock folder right like there's a lot of engineering that goes into them to make them nice and they are built very very well built very solidly and very tight like the fitment on all the screws on all the hardware is precision like it is tight fitment everything is press fit in like all of these guys here and so it's very exacting um and so because of that really high build quality people know that these are built to last they're going to hold up for a very long time and so therefore people are willing to spend more money on a knife that is more well put together more well constructed than another knife so these are things that are really important factors to well factor in because you know no one wants to buy a cheaply or poorly constructed blade so yeah anyways that's kind of my input on expensive knives i'm definitely a fan of expensive knives i like them a lot but at the same time too just make sure that whenever you're buying an expensive knife especially something like a custom you know make sure that the build quality is really there make sure that the time and effort that it was really put into the blade that there's no imperfections to it that this knife you know if it's a custom if it's a one-off something like this gavco nurse that it is something that is truly worth what they're charging and to be critical is valuable you know i think so many people especially in the past few years have just been especially with knives like the grismo norsemans that people are like oh they want a thousand they want 900 they want 800 dollars sure you know like people have just given over money large amounts of money because they just assumed that those knives were high quality when in all reality you were getting a mid-tech at best and so i think it's important to note that and once again i'm not trying to just bash on grismo i'm trying to bash on shiro but those are two really good examples once again custom knife factory is a really good example of charging way too much for something that's basically a mid-tech made in china and moreover with 
custom knife factory, we don't even know where their OEM is. Like they don't talk about who actually makes their knives over in China because uh, custom knife factory is a Russian knife brand. So it's not them themselves, they're not the OEMs. So I, it's really worth noting, you know, like if you're going to spend a lot of money, buy knives that are w well made, that have good brand reputation, good brand integrity, and are going to hold up. Like resale value will be strong on them. And once again, that's not necessarily saying that you should buy a knife with the intentions of being able to sell it, but no one likes losing out on hundreds of dollars because they bought a knife that was $1,000 that's now $600 or $500. Anyways, guys, that's all I have to say about custom knives, at least for now. As always, God bless, and I'm out.